today I've come out to a little place called East Wellow. Lovely little village in the, near Romsey in Southampton. And the reason we're here today is to see the grave of Florence Nightingale, founder of nurses and the nursing trade and hospitals and stuff. Now, Florence Nightingale was born on the 12th of May, 1820. She lived here near Romsey, just outside East Wellow, in a place called Emberley House. And she was born into a quite a wealthy family, a dad, a father. He was um, a landowner. Uh, obviously he owned the land that the house was on, big house. One of a few houses. But she spent most of her childhood at this house, um, just reading books. Um, and the story goes that one day she was sat under a tree in a garden and she got a calling from God, as she says, to look after people, care for people. So she started reading books and back in them days, people of her kind of standards, uh, which was quite high class, they usually married gentlemen um, and she wanted to work as a nurse. She wanted to be a nurse, she wanted to care for people basically. Now in those days, back in the 1820s, uh, or the early 1800s, things like nursing were done by really low class people, is the best way of saying it. The thing with this is, someone high class as her doing a very low class job was unheard of and her father wouldn't let her do it. So she read books and she taught herself. She read books for years, most of her childhood, just sat under this tree and around the gardens, just reading books. And her father, to stop her wanting to be a nurse, used to send her on trips around the world. And when she travelled around the world, she'd take her books with her. And all she would do was just read books, read books about caring for people. And she came up with the philosophy that people in hospitals needed sanitization there was no sanitization back then they needed sanitization so fresh air sunlight would um be a good cure for people um she always believed this now she um here's the thing a father didn't want her to be a nurse but she read so many books on it in the end he he, he gave in so what she done she got a load of women together um, usually from the slum areas, and she trained them to be nurses. And what she trained them was hygiene, cleanliness. She disciplined these um, these people. And then, in her thirties, the the um, Crimean War broke out. So all these women that she'd been training, she uh, went off to the Crimean War, marched into the hospital, and was asking that you know they want to care for the the patients uh, in the hospital and a lot of the high up people are like no you know we women in war no a bit old-fashioned this day and age but um in the end they they agreed to cut a long story short she got in there and the first thing they done is they cleaned the hospitals in them days there was no sanitization so the floors were filthy it smelt, the smell was horrendous. So they, they, they cleaned it all up and cleaned bed sheets, put clean bed sheets down and uh, started caring for the, uh, the soldiers, wounded soldiers from the Crimean War, French and the English. Um, that was eight, uh, 1854, I believe. Um, I didn't research that bit <laughs> uh, from memory. I think it's 1853, 1854. Now, once she had uh, sanitised everything, um, she used to care for them at, at night. You know, at night, them days, they were just left to their own devices. 
she would get a lamp and she would walk the wards. And on doing so, she got the nickname Lady of the Lamp or Lady with the Lamp. Some people say Lady with the Lamp. Some people say Lady and the Lamp. Lady and the Lamp. And they loved her because she cared. She cared for them. After the, the war, she, she came back to England and found herself famous and made a big, big name for herself. Massive, big impact. And uh, the casualty rate went from 40% death down to 2% death, just with her caring for these, uh, for these, these soldiers wounded. And then once again, back in those days, the thing with hospitals, wounds, there was more people dying from diseases. The hospitals um, weren't clean, so that they would die from, de they'd get their wounds. This day and age you would survive from those kinds of wounds, but they would die from infections of wounds. So you're going from 40% death down to 2% death. That's a massive, massive impact. So she got a, a, a massive, huge big name for herself. Huge big name for herself. And when she got back, they found out that, uh, or she had found out that they had made up the Nightingale Foundation. And I believe it had about £45,000 in that account, which is a lot of money today, let alone back in them days. So, and that was for her. And she decided what she would do is she would use that money and she would start a nursing training school called the Nightingale School of Training. And as I said before, she'd get women, they would come in, she would train them to be nurses, massive discipline, uh, dress code, mannerisms, teach them cleanliness um, and hygiene always use clean sheets back in those days if someone died they would take the bandages off and use them on somebody else no wonder they died from infection so she stopped all that now also um back in those days if you're a soldier and you were wounded and went to um, hospital you never got paid you only got paid for fighting um, she also turned that around eventually. Um, soldiers that had fought in, in, the, in the war got injured, went into hospital, um, and they got paid while they were there as well. So she started up the, the, this foundation um, and started training uh, nurses to become proper hygienic nurses. She, um, that school opened up in London, St. Thomas's Hospital, still there now. Big famous hospital, St. Thomas's Hospital. Throughout her life, she, she got proposed to several times, declined everyone because all she wanted to do was nursing and she thought being married would um, interfere with what she wanted to do. So um, she pursued her career, never getting married, never having children. I just fell down a hole, but never mind. There's a massive, massive story to Florence Nightingale, but we're just taking a little pinch today, um, just a little taster um, to remember her by. She died, an old lady, 90 years old, uh, in 1910. She was 90 years old in 1910. She passed away at her house where she was living in London Still had the family home back here in uh, Hampshire. She uh, died at number 10 South Street, uh, Mayfair in London. There's a plaque up there where the buildings used to be. Um, I'm assuming they're new buildings there now. So her remaining family were offered like you know, we can bury Florence because of her input to the, to the country. Well, you know, the input to the world in actual fact that um, she could be buried at Westminster Abbey. Massive privilege, massive privilege. Family declined and pursued with her wishes, which was to be buried near her home in Hampshire. And that's where we are today. Lovely little graveyard. 
in East Wellow, near Romsey, just down the road from her house, em Emberley House, which is still there now also. Um, it is now a school, I believe. was a school since 1949, um, and as far as I'm aware, it's still a school. Just getting attacked by a tree at the moment. Right, just behind me there, you can see a grave. It's the biggest one in here, and the cleanest, the whitest, stands out a mile. Here's the church, just behind me here. That's a little church, St Margaret's Church, that is. Lovely church. I uh, won't be going inside today, but I'm doing a one on churches one day, like I've been meaning to do these sorts of videos for the last two years, and I've finally got around to starting it, finally. So, uh, here's her grave. Let's pop just up to her grave. She's her uh, father and mother and sister are also there. So this is her grave. Big old, big old grave's about, what, 10 foot tall, I suppose. That's Frances Nightingale, wife of William Nightingale. Obviously her mother and father. And we come round to there, William Edward Nightingale of Emberley. Um, that was a, a other house was um, Hurst House in um, in Derbyshire. Lee Hurst House up in Derbyshire had another big big house up there. Although Emberley was the biggest house. And then you come to Florence Nightingales. F.N. Florence Nightingale, born 12th of May, 1820, died 13th of August, 1910. She was more famous than her mum and dad and her sister. I'll just scroll this down so you can read that if you wanted to. I'll stand here and read all of that. But as a memorial, there's more about her father and mother. It goes to show what sort of lady she was. What she wanted on her grave, FN. That's all she wanted, FN. Florence Nightingale. Quiet little graveyard out in the country in the middle of nowhere, really. Absolutely amazing. And she could have been in Westminster Abbey. Nope, she wanted to come home. And home is where she came. If you'd like to subscribe, if you don't want to subscribe, just click like. It's free. It doesn't take a second. It just helps with the channel. Have a good one. Hope you enjoyed the little tour of Florence Nightingale's resting place. So, uh, till the next time, I bid you farewell. Goodbye and good luck.